Kitco News, special coverage of the Deutsche Goldmesse is brought to you by O3 Mining. First Majestic Silver Keith Neumeier has packed a lot of news into the past 12 months. There was a $470 million deal to acquire Jarrett Canyon. There's also an environmental assessment that was announced for First Mining Gold. Keith, welcome back to Kitco. Yeah, very nice seeing you again, Michael. You've had the Q3, that was about a month ago, and that was for First Majestic Silver. Mm -hmm. uh, can you talk a little bit about folding in Jarrett Canyon into your production mix? Sure. Uh, well, the highlights in Q3, first of all, we held back uh, you know, one and a half million ounces of silver, mm -hmm. which turned out to be a pretty good decision, you know, with, with silver now up you know, substantially from what it was trading at uh, in, in Q3. Um, it was also the first quarter that Jarrett Canyon was in our umbrella that ran for a full quarter. So we had a quite a large gold uptick in, in production, uh, which is nice to see. And uh, Ermitano is uh, coming along quite well. We had an Ermitano update and uh, we're now seeing Ermitano start to uh, uh, pour uh, gold. We actually had our first pour just uh, this week. Now you had some costs that were gone up on Jarrett Canyon. You're going to be able to get those costs down. Yeah, we had to uh, uh, upgrade or, or uh, lift the tailings dam number two uh, at a cost of about $13 million, which hit our all-in sustaining costs. So part of that was in Q2, a very small amount, but a ni about $9 million of that $13 million hit Q3. So that's a big number, you know, to hit all of, all in sustaining costs. So um, that'll finish uh, with now coming to an end this quarter. Um, so those costs will disappear as of uh, really in the next couple of weeks. And then uh, Q1, we should see a pretty nice improvement in cost at Jarrett Canyon. I'd like to talk about uh, that timing of uh, the silver sales as well, too. Um, you know, those are kind of big strategic decisions that you can make when you're given like the size of the company as well, too. What types of decisions do you make in terms of those sales or what can you make? Well, I guess it's that trading blood in me. Yeah. You know, I, I, I came from that side of the business back in the 80s. You know, I worked for three of the largest national banks on the floor of the Vancouver Stock Exchange trading equities uh, mm -hmm. for those banks and arbitraging, you know, uh, equities, you know, between the different markets in Canada and, the, and within the United States. So it's just kind of that trading blood that, you know, when I look at a market, you know, that, you know, silver is very volatile. We know that, you know, silver can go up five dollars or down five dollars and a quarter we hate to see it but it just it's reality that's something we have to get used to or we are used to and when i see things like that happen i just like to take advantage of it and uh, that's what we did you have the tax dispute right now with mexico can you provide an update sure well it's now under nafta you know the the the, uh, the, com the committee or the board um, or the re review board has now been formed uh, the chairman has now put in, been put in place. There's been one uh, meeting of the, that c uh, committee, and uh, uh, the next meeting's not scheduled until, I believe, March of 2022. So it's a bit of a long process. It's likely going to last a couple more years. Now, there's a lot of uh, uses for silver. There's the investment side. There's a the jewelry side. But if you look at your presentation, you're leading all with industrial mans. I think that the first slide is an electric car, and I think that the second slide is a solar panels. Right. Yeah, and, and I think, uh, you know, silver is, in my opinion, and I, you know, most people hear me talk about silver on a pretty regular basis. And, you know, I claim it's, you know, the, the probably the most misunderstood metal on the planet. Uh, you know, people look at, at, at silver as a poor man's gold. And, and there, there's other people, there's many people out there that still say that today. Uh, uh, I don't look at silver that way at all. I look at silver as a very strategic metal. You know, something we need as the human race to do all the things that we want to do. Um, you've got two industries, the electric car industry, which is consuming approximately 10% of the world supply right now and growing, you know, fairly dramatically over the next couple of years, you know, you know, with governments trying to get electric cars to replace fuel combustion cars. So that ball is rolling. It's not going backwards. And then you've got solar panels, which is also an, an increasing marketplace. Uh, you know, over the next couple of years, we're going to see a lot, of, a lot more solar panels being uh, constructed and consumed. So uh, that market uh, consumes about 10%, well, actually about 12% of silver. So you've got two markets, relatively new markets, electrical cars and solar panels, that are consuming over 20% of the world supply. Your other hat, your chair of first mining gold, you had environmental assessment news. Yeah, great news. Uh, you know, the permitting process is just, you know, long and boring. And, and uh, you know, unfortunately, that's just the case. And, uh, you know, you look at the Lausanne curve, um, you know, relatively famous uh, 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 curve that you can look at. And, and, you know, you go through the exploration phase, you go through the development phase, and then construction and production and so on. And the development phase is where first mining is currently at. And it's the longest and most boring phase. And that's when shareholders have to be the most patient. It's just, uh, I bought some stock just a couple of days ago 
ago because the price in my view is just ridiculous but you know that's just my opinion and uh, uh, it could be a couple more years before a permit is actually uh, um, accomplished for that asset but it's a huge mine you know, it's a five million ounce mine it's going to be a three hundred thousand ounce plus producer for a mine life of over 12 years and uh, there's just no assets like that around and you know it's going to be producing gold at probably less than seven hundred dollars an ounce uh, so it's, it's just a fantastic asset. We're happy to have it, but it, you know, de-risking an asset like that just takes time. Well, lastly, Keith, uh, you did mention earlier your trader buy. You have it in your blood. Uh, mm -hmm. You know, it's been a run-up in gold right now. We're in the mid 1800s. Mm -hmm. How's precious metals looking? Yeah, the, the surprise, the move has surprised me a little bit because um, um, the economy is still doing quite well. Interest rates. Uh, you know, we, we really haven't uh, come down what I expected they would so far. You've got inflation running high, which is inflating uh, mm -hmm. gold and helping uh, uh, copper. It hasn't, you know, the, the metal that's probably surprised me the most is silver. Uh, you know, because you've got the other metals moving. You've got oil at 80 plus dollars. You've got copper at, you know, $4 plus and uh, looking, you know, like it's on its way to five. You've got natural gas north of $5. So you've got a lot of commodities. Look at all the grains, you know. Um, uh, um, you know, so everything's been moving except silver. And uh, um, that's the one that I think is going to play catch up. Uh, gold is going to, uh, uh, in my view, reach all-time highs, but probably not until next year or until the year after. Thank you, Keith. Stay tuned for more video from Deutsche Goldmesse. My name is Michael McRae. Kitco News, special coverage of the Deutsche Goldmesse is brought to you by O3 Mining.